The following is a presentation of TBS Sports, where the PGA Championship begins on August 8th. Bobby Cox brings his troops home to begin a crucial 14-game homestand, and he looks to ace Tom Glavin to get things off to a good start. But tonight's opponents own baseball's best record with 60 wins. The Pirates lead the East by seven. Braves and Pirates, a doubleheader next. game Doug Drayback on the mound for the Pirates eight and three lifetime against Atlanta Tom Glavin will pitch for the Braves five and five lifetime against Pittsburgh and it's time to say I guess finally a crucial homestand for Atlanta 14 games six games out of first place got to play good here and you're right back in the hunt well skip normally clubs win their pennants at home they hope to play 500 on the road it's been a little bit different for the Braves this year but this is a homestand where the Braves are playing some ball clubs that they played well against they're 18 and 7 against the East when they come into Atlanta Pittsburgh is a club they played well here but they need to beat up on San Diego San Francisco and Houston and I think it's an interesting to watch the philosophies of the managers as they put together their starting rotations especially for today Jim Leland is going with his two aces he's going with Drayback and Smiley he's saving his younger guys for the second day so we're getting a chance to see two managers show you a little bit of different philosophies about double headers. And we'll be back with the starting lineups play by play story right after this. The Atlanta Braves America's team brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. And by the official airline of the Atlanta Braves. Delta, we love to fly, and it shows. The first of a two-week homestand, the first of two on this Monday night in Atlanta. Welcome back to Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Let's have a look at the batting orders for the Pirates and the Braves. Gary Reedus will lead off and play first base. Jay Bell, red hot Jay Bell, bats second play shortstop. Jose Gonzalez is in center field, he'll hit third. Bobby Bonilla, the right fielder, batting cleanup. Lloyd McClendon moves to left field, and Lloyd will hit fifth. John Wayner, the third baseman, batting sixth. It's Jose Lean hitting seventh and playing second base. Tom Prince behind the plate will bat eighth. And on the mound for the Pirates, a guy who has really turned his season around, that's Doug Drayback. Braves batting order looks like this. It's Otis Nixon in right field. Deion Sanders in left field will bat second. Terry Pendleton at third base hitting third. Batting cleanup and in center field, it's Ron Gant. Tommy Gregg gets the start at first. Tommy will hit fifth. Jeff Treadway will again be at second. He moves into the sixth spot in the batting order. Greg Olson will bat seventh and catch. The shortstop, Raphael Belliard, first stop, start for Raphael in a while. He'll hit eighth. And Tom Glavin, having one of his few bad outings of this year, will be on the mound. The umpiring crew for game one, Mark Hirschbeck behind the plate, Dana DeMuth at first, Greg Bonet down at second, and at third base, it's Larry Poncino. Defensively, the Braves will line up with Sanders, Gant, Nixon in the outfield. It'll be Pendleton, Belliard, Treadway, and Greg the infield. Olsen behind the plate, and left-hander Tom Glavin on the mound. You see his numbers, the earned run average up over two because of his outing last out against Pittsburgh. In five innings, gave up eight hits, six earned runs. The only truly bad outing Tom Glavin has had this year. While he completes his warm-up tosses to kick off this long night of baseball, once again, here's Skip Carey. Okay, Don, thank you very much. Glavin still conducting his warm-up tosses. <laughs> I've done it again. That's great. <laughs> According to my scorebook, the Braves are the visiting team and the Pirates are the home team. It so was a long be. road trip. It sure was, and it's going to be a long night, I'm afraid. <laughs> but we will have both games for you live right here on WTBS. Not Memorex. Not Memorex for us. Another baseball note. The National League has suspended Chicago Cubs outfielder Andre Dawson for one game, fined him an undisclosed amount. 
for his actions in a game against Cincinnati last week. They can make up their mind about that, but nothing yet on Rob Dibble. All Andre did was rearrange the bat rack and put it out on the field. Three fifteen of them out there. Just wanted to prove there was no shortage of good lumber. That's right. Gary Reedus will lead it off. A hazy, actually sort of a crummy night in Atlanta, to be frank about it. It rained here about an hour and a half before game time, and the field was covered until just a few minutes ago. So we're ready to go. Reedus hitting 265, three homers, 12 RBI. And the first pitch, a fastball outside. One ball, no whoop, check it, a strike call. Gotta wait a second for our buddy Mark Hirschbeck. The 0 1 pitch. Here it is. Let up, fly ball, pretty well hit left center field. Back goes Gant. He looks up. 1 0 Pirate. Reedus, a solo home run to lead off the game. The tenth surrendered by Tom Glavin. And Pittsburgh has the lead. That's a home run where the only thing you can do is give Gary Reedus a lot of credit. A pretty good breaking ball down in the strike zone. Shows you his strength because he hits it with one hand. Look how far out in front he is. One hand. That ball was about knee high, and it looks like it's going to be a night when the ball is carrying. Here's a strike to Jay Bell over the outside corner. It's 0 1. Bell hitting 288, 8 out of 17 in his career against Tom Glavin. Glavin 1 and 1 this year, 5 and 5 lifetime against Pittsburgh. You know, they roughed him up last week up there. Strike called over the inside corner. It's 0 and 2. And Bell is red hot. He has had four consecutive three for four ball games, 12 out of his last 16. That's how the average has gotten to where it is. Bounced it up there. A ball and two strikes. In the other baseball later on St. Louis at Houston Montreal at San Francisco and the Mets are in Los Angeles. The pitch right off the end of the bat foul. American League Oakland at New York later on California is at Cleveland Chicago at Toronto Texas at Boston Detroit at Minnesota and Baltimore plays at Seattle. Pirates have won four out of five 13 of 17. A ball and two strikes the count. It's almost smoggy here isn't it. High pop right side everybody chasing it Greg and Nixon on the run still going Tommy Greg good play. <laughs> Greg raced into the bullpen to take care of Jay Bell one away. Tough play for an infielder running with your back to home plate, having to track the ball and then catch it at the last minute. That ball was drifting away from him. And for Tommy Gregg, who doesn't get a whole lot of time over there at first base, that is a good play. Jose Gonzalez, the banner. He's hitting 047 with a homer and three RBIs, but till the All Star break, he wasn't hitting anything. Curve, ground ball to third, a one hopper to Pendleton. Fields and throws. Got it. <laughs> Gonzalez is retired, and Bobby Bonilla the better. 13 homers, 64 ribbies, a 305 average. And no contract for next year. John Smiley and Rick Mailer will pitch the second game here. Mark Hirschbeck, our home plate umpire, wants to wish regards to his mother in law, Pauline Mallon, up in Stratford, Connecticut, recovering from some surgery and doing very, very well. A ball and a strike to count. We're live from the stadium in Atlanta. The pitch. Little check swing roller foul. 
You know, a lot of guys come into baseball with the ability to hit, but you have to wait a little while before they mature and get stronger. If a guy is a big guy and has a good stroke, eventually the numbers will come. Look at Bonilla's career home runs his first two years and then what he has done the last four. What batter you figure they're on over on radio? He might still have Gonzalez up there. Pitch low and check it. Strike over the inside corner and the inning is over. Olsen was surprised by that when he flipped the ball back to Glavin. But Bonilla is called out and the top of the first comes to a close. But the Rita's homer has given the lead to the Pirates. The end of a half inning, one nothing. Pittsburgh one to nothing. Braves come in the bat. Here's how the Pirates will line up defensively. It'll be an outfield of McClendon, Gonzalez, and Bonilla, an infield of Wayner, Bell, Lean, and Reedus. Prince behind the plate, Doug Drabeck on the mound. Drabeck was two and seven May 22nd. Since then, he has won eight out of his last 10 decisions, including a seven inning outing against the Braves about a week ago when he beat them 12 to three. Nixon with a 16 game hitting streak leads it off. He's hitting at 332 on the year. Dre Beck, one and one this year, eight and three lifetime against Atlanta. Otis short to bunt, took it low, one ball, no strengths. Don Sutton, Skip Carey with you from the ballpark in Atlanta. The Pirates have jumped to a one nothing lead. Strike right through there. One and one, the count to Nixon. See, Otis tied for second in the league in the pitch. Breaking ball inside, two and one. Line drive, center field base hit. Nixon singles to center. He has a league lead in 54 stolen bases in 72 attempts. Here's Sanders. We talked to Otis about his hitting philosophy on Saturday, and he said a long time ago, Harry the Hat Walker worked with him on doing just what he's doing now, but only when Hal McRae was working with him up in Montreal did it sink in that with his speed, if he just slapped the ball up the middle, he'd get a lot of base hits. The stretch by Drebeck. There he goes. Pitch is high. Prince's throw is late. Number 55 for Nixon. Had his mind made up to go on the first one. Got a good jump. Took a, even took a peek to see where the pitch was. Throw from Prince. If it sails to the other side, they have a shot at him. But on the shortstop side with the jump Nixon had, no chance for Bell to get him. The pitch was a strike to Dion. He tries to bunt, but fouls it off, and he's in the hole 0-2. Two pitch. Got him with a curveball. Sanders goes down swinging. Can that get the runner to third? One away. And here's the league's leading hitter, Terry Pendleton. That's a big out for Doug Drabeck for a couple reasons. One, you get the first out, but second, with a strikeout, no chance for Nixon to advance to third. Now it's going to take a base hit to get him home. Pendleton, as you saw it, 338, 12 homers, 50 runs driven in. Pickoff plays back easily. Shouldn't have thrown the ball, really. You can tell it's going to be a long night. Don has four pens up. Four pens, about 11 books. Nope, that's three pens, one marker, and seven books. I said about. It's my job to explain things. It certainly is. The stretch. <laughs> 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 
lot of big Braves fans looking in up in Pittsburgh tonight. The stretch. Curve bounce foul pass first. Oh and one the count to Pendleton. To a man the Braves realize the importance of this homestand. This is their best chance all year to really make hay. 14 straight games at home. To the plate, Drayback, high and away. That time Bell jumped in behind the runner. Drayback just waited till he got back in position and then went ahead and fired. Pendleton, a 3.52 average with runners in scoring position. To the plate. High and away. Two balls and a strike. We're going to have a fine crowd by the time the night's over. There are 10, 12,000 here already, and they're well scattered, which means they'll be filling in many of the empty seats. The 2 1 pitch. Three balls and a strike. Randy Gant waits on deck. Oh, what a cut he had at a high breaking ball, but he missed it, fouled it back to the screen. When I say missed it, I know he fouled it, but he had a good pitch to hit and let it get away, and he's upset with himself. And, I, and the reason that he missed it, it was in a hitter's area, but because it was a breaking ball, he was geared for fastball, and the change of speeds threw his timing off just a little bit. Drabeck has absolutely not thrown him a fastball in the strike zone. It's been all change-ups and sliders. The payoff pitch to TP instead back to second. Nicks him back easily. Sorry for the fans trying to get home listening to these skycopter traffic reports because all those helicopters are hovering over the stadium watching the game. There goes another. The 3 2. Hot shot. Fair ball into the corner. Tie game. Pendleton around first. He's on his way to second. He's around second. He'll stop there with a double. What a year he's having. Tie ball game. What a good at bat for Pendleton. Gets the Braves even. That's one thing. But he got really nothing in the hitting zone. He picked on a hanging slider here. Got his 21st double, his 51st RBI, and got the Braves even. Here's Ronnie Gant. Three out of 21 in his career against Drebeck. One of those hits a home run. The go ahead run in scoring position with one off. Kerr on high. Check it at the letters. 0 and 1. Boy, you have to wait on Hirschbeck, don't you? Yes, you do. But we're glad his mother in law is doing better. I announced that before you weren't paying attention. Oh, well. The pitch fouled it back. You can see how he has cut down on his swing, Ronnie Gant. He's just. He's strong enough. He can just drive it with his upper body. I think a couple of those one-handed home runs he hit, and the inside Parker that he hit in Saint, inside the Parker that he hit in St. Louis should have convinced him. He hit that with one hand off the wall, about 385 off Lee Smith. 0 oh and 2 is the count. Drabeck steps back off the mound. You better get what you can of him early because he has a knack of settling down. 
So far his breaking pitches have stayed up. Not that one and Gant is out on strikes. Second out of the inning both strike out. Well he has just showcased his fastball early in the ball game. Everything he's gone is the breaking ball. You mentioned most of them have been up. There's one there about knee high on the outside corner. That's a good two strike pitch. Tommy Gregg bounce against his former mates. He came up in the pirate train. Jeff Treadway waits on deck. One ball, no strikes. Two and zero is the count. Well, it looks like Dion and I are in the same boat. We'll both be leaving to do football. Only one difference. He's going permanently, and for about two million extra dollars. There's a strike right in there. Yeah, but you're not through negotiating yet. Oh, I am for now. Two and one, the count. Your deal's about up, huh? The pitch. But I don't have football to fall back no. on. But we wish you everything good wherever you're. Three balls, one strike. Many more days with you. It could be Tri Cities. <laughs> I've got you headed in that direction, I think. The 3 1 pitch. Outside, he walked it. And here's Treadway. Jeff at 328, three homers, 21 RBI. You go down this lineup, Treadway is really a, the only guy in the lineup who's had any success at all against Drebeck. Pendleton was six for 30, Gant three for 21. Jeff is hitting right at 300 career against Drebeck. With two home runs against him. That would be nice. Boy, oh, nothing at all on that pitch. One ball, no strengths. He is really struggling. And he looks like he is right now, but he looks like he is bound and determined to establish his breaking ball early in the ball game because he's staying with it. He'll make two or three bad ones, and then, like he did with Gant, hit one knee high and on the outside corner. Two and oh, he can't throw a strength. Greg Olson is next. Ray Miller, the pitching coach of the Pirates, on his way to the mound. First game of a doubleheader here at the ballpark tonight. So if you're in the area, plenty of time to come on over and watch a lot of baseball. Same two teams tomorrow night Paul Miller against Steve Avery. And then on Wednesday, it's Rick Reed against John Smoltz. Well, this is a surprise. Andre Dawson has announced that he will appeal his suspension. The way the National League office is about handling those appeals, Andre will have been retired for seven years before they get around to him. Two balls, no strikes. The count to Treadway. The stretch. Strike call over the outside corner. It's two and one. Pershbeck didn't used to call balls and strikes like this, did he? I don't remember anybody except Dutch Renner taking this much time. Curve line down the left field line. Trouble if it's fair into the corner. One run is in. Greg around third. He will score. It's a double for Treadway. And the Braves have the lead.
One of those hanging breaking balls and what Treadway had said is, okay, you're not going to come in on me. I'll look for something outside, take it the other way. They had given him so much room down the left field line. All he had to do was get it anywhere fair, and he knew he had extra bases, and the Braves have a three to one lead. And Greg Olson will try to add to it. A little low, one ball, no strengths. Two and oh is behind yet another hitter. He's had a troublesome first inning. Gary Reedus had a leadoff homer to give the Pirates the lead, but the Braves have bounced back with three of their own. Lined into left center field. Everybody chasing it. Center field is there, and the inning is over. Gonzalez hauls in Olsen's looping liner. But the Reds bounce back and take the lead. Three runs, three hits, no errors, one left. At the end of an inning, it's 3 1, Atlanta. We go to the second inning. And Lloyd McClendon will lead it off. Dennis Martinez, who pitched that perfect game against the Dodgers, the National League Player of the Week, Carlos Martinez of the Indians. American League Player of the Week, so it's a case of double Martinez in the Player of the Week department. McClendon is hitting 284 homers, 14 RBI. And he's had good luck against Glavin, 7 out of 14. And here we go. Little low, one ball, no strikes. Don Sutton, Skip Carey with you from Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. 3 1 Atlanta after one. There's a drive. Make that, I think, 3 to 2. Sanders looks up and can do nothing but admire it. Second leadoff homer of the night. It's a 3 2 ball game. First readers now McClendon. He nailed that baby. Readers hit a breaking ball. Tom Glavin's success this year has been greatly because he's been able to establish the fastball inside. That's what he wanted to do with McClendon, but that was inside part of the plate, not inside on the hands. John Wayner is hitting a cool 429 since coming up to the Pirates. And he has worn us out. First pitch of strike. <laughs> 0 and 2 is the count. Wayner not too sure about that one. I think that's a spot you have to pitch this guy and you're going to have to make him show you that with the hands held low a hitch in his bat that he can handle inside fastballs before you're going to be able to do anything else with him. The 0 2 chop to third should be easy Pendleton hop skip and throw one down. Wayner is retired Jose Lean the batter. Lane at 263, three homers, 28 runs driven in. 3 2 ball game. The hitters are ahead of the pitchers so far tonight. <laughs> 0 and 1 the count. Line drive, left field, base hit. Lane just reached out and Stroke that one into left center. Thus far, all the hitting has come against the fastball and the curveball. Tom Glavin has yet to show his good change. 
He is a smart enough pitcher that he'll pick up on this and you watch him start going to the change of speeds. Prince took a shot at right field, fouled it off. It's 0 and 1. The Turner family from St. Louis here rooting for the Braves. The De Albos from Sanford, Florida. The Smith and Willis families from St. Petersburg. The Hutchinsons from Rockingham, North Carolina. The stretch pitch. Kirby bounced a foul past third. Three two our score tying run is at first. There's one out in the inning. Pop foul back and out of play. Still 0 2 on Prince. Lean three out of six in the stolen base department. See him throw that hand up when he scampers back. He's been tagged at least once by an errant throw in the side of the head. Double play ball, maybe. Billiard has it. Out there. Out there. Six, four, three, and the inning is over. But the Pirates draw closer. A run on two hits. McClendon Homer, the big ball. No airs, no one left. Got to go get some more. Bottom half of the second inning. Atlanta three, Pittsburgh two. Bottom half of the second inning. Raphael Belliard will lead it off for Atlanta. Boy, I hope they're alert at master control. If not, our careers are. Maybe we ought to get a seven second. Uh, I don't think so. Hi, Don. Both the Prince and Princess of Darkness here at the ballpark. Don McGuire. Dropping back. Belliard will lead it off. Belliard at 226. Right back into the wine curve, blowing outside. One ball, no strikes. Pitcher Tom Glavitt on deck. Fastball is outside, two and zero. Oh. He's been behind virtually every hitter in this game. So neither pitcher has really gotten into a groove yet. Right called. It's two and one. I'd like to see the Braves take advantage of this early in the ball game. You recall in Pittsburgh, they got him for three runs in the first and the second innings. Then he shut him down for the next five. So until he gains that control, it'd be a good idea to get a couple of more on the board. Little pop into short right. They have him played perfectly. Bonilla squeezes it one away. That's Rafi's eighth fat bat since the All Star break. Tom Glavin is the batter. Glavin at 273 with four runs driven in. Otis Nixon moves on deck. Tommy tried to bunt his way on, fouled it back, nothing in one. He's a pretty good hitter.
breaking ball is inside one and one is the count. And Drabeck's approach to pitching to him shows you that he believes that ran the fastball away from him then threw him his best curveball. Line drive base hit left field. That's the fourth hit off Drabeck. Here's Otis Nixon who has one of the other three. A solid single to center to start the game. Nixon scored his 56th run in that inning. Rennie Gant with 60 leads the team in that department. So a runner at first and one down. Having a good athlete. He runs quite well. Curveball. That's in there for a strike. It's 0 1. Deion Sanders has moved on deck for Atlanta. Right under his chin. A ball and a strike. Rick Mailer against John Smiley in game two of the Twinider. Breaking ball, stayed outside. Two balls and a strike. You really have to believe in your speed and your ability to bunt. To bunt as often as Nixon does right into the teeth of a defense that's set to defense the bunt. And as successfully as he does it. High and inside, it's three and one. If he wants to bunt toward first base would probably be his best bet here because Reedus has to hold the runner on. But now he has the pitcher crippled he might just hack away. Runner at first one down three two ball game. Braves lead the Pirates. Tenth batter Drabeck has faced early in the ball game. Every time he's been behind he has not gone to the fastball in this situation. He does now and it's a foul down the left side and out of play. Nice catch. Huh? You ought to measure that glove. It looks like it exceeds the. Whatever happened to that? Remember last year, umpires carrying the tape measures around yes. and measuring the gloves. I guess the shop steward told him to quit. The three-two pitch. Ground ball to third. Out there. No chance there. Eh? I was afraid Glavin was going to get hit right between the eyes with Lean's throw there. Well, you got two things you don't want him to do run in, standing up, and get hit. You also don't want him to slide in there and hurt himself because there's a pretty good chance that on two perfect throws, they're not going to double up Nixon. You don't want your starter to jeopardize his game trying to break up a double play. The, uh, uh, Otis swiped one in the first, his 55th of the year. And it wouldn't surprise you to see him take off here. And there he goes. And there's the throw, and it is high, and he's still out. The inning is over, and Nixon argues about it. Bell took the throw and slapped a fine tag on it. And the inning comes to a close. One hit, no runs, no errors, and nobody left. At the end of two, it's 3 2, Atlanta. This telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Atlanta National League Baseball Club and is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or the use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Atlanta National League Baseball Club is prohibited. And pitcher Doug Grayback will lead off the top of the third. 3 2 Atlanta is our score. Drainback, a 180 batsman on the year. He's driven in one run. Glavin has surrendered a leadoff homer in each of the first two innings. That string will almost certainly come to an end here. A strength to 0 1.
Fastball outside. A ball and a strike is the count. One and two, the count. Despite all the bad weather the Braves have endured this year, they are already 438,000 people ahead of last year in attendance. The one two. High fastball disposals of Drebeck. One away, second strikeout for Glavin. And Gary Ritas will be the batter. Ritas, a solo homer to lead off the game. Glenn Diamond, our producer tonight, Lonnie Dale, our director, Rick Fancher, our technical director, Lori Brooks, our associate director, Hal Galima, Ashley Gallagher. In charge of graphics, our engineer in charge, Jeff Hall and Michelle Zarzaka, the lovely and talented Michelle Zarzaka is our talent coordinator. Which means she tells Don and I to shut up every so often every day. <laughs> Pitch is a strike over the outside corner. This at bat will tell you whether or not Glavin is convinced that Ritas is a pretty good breaking ball hitter or if that was a fluke. If he goes back and uses the same style of pitching, the same pitching that he did the first time up, then he'll be convinced that he's a pretty good that he is not a good curveball hitter. This time he's gone to the changeup and away from the breaking ball to the fastball. 0 oh and 2 is the count. Ah, pop. Tommy Gregg calls for it in foul territory. Two down. Jay Bell stands in there. Bell popped the first. A good running catch by Greg with his back to the infield his first time. The Lipscombs and Liven Goods from Gadsden, Alabama are here. And they say roll tide to TBS fans, which reminds us that SEC football will be aired on TBS this fall. 0 and 1 is the count. It's even now, one on one. We'll have better than 25,000 before the night is over. One and two is the count, and Glavin in this inning looks like Glavin. Short center. Ronnie Gant is there, and the inning is easily over. No hits, no runs, no errors, and no one left. We go to the bottom half of the third inning. Atlanta three, Pittsburgh two. Okay, Sutton, go ahead and take your best shot. I just wonder where the W is. Oh, oh. W T B S. The only thing right about we that could is fill in some blanks there. It's terrible and it's misspelled. Yeah, but we <laughs> we sure could. Deion Sanders will lead it up. Wonderful. But unlike some people at some broadcast facilities, that ain't like us. We have class. One ball, no strikes. The count to Sanders, a strikeout victim, his first step. And there's a drive to deep right field, but not deep enough. Bonilla is back there. It was well hit, but didn't care. One down. Sanders lines to right. Terry Pendleton, the batter. He doubled home a run his first time. And with that base hit, he raised his average to 340. I guess any time you're in a position to sign a free agent contract, 
I mean, the money has to be the big thing because you have your family to take care of. But you have to wonder what it's going to be like starting a new and a new place and how it's going to go and if the fans are going to get on you. And what a love affair between Pendleton and Atlanta. <laughs> He's having the best year of his life. He's become a popular favorite here. Terry had a good reputation prior to coming in here and I think to the advantage of the Atlanta fans and to his advantage it wasn't like going to another league to a city you had never visited or had never played any games both the city of Atlanta and Terry had had a chance to see each other perform and uh, I think it, it seems like just a natural blend. Three balls no strikes see if they turn him loose here. Braves on top by one. We'll never know. The pitch is nowhere near the strike zone. Second walk of the night. Here's Ronnie Gant, a strikeout victim, his first time. Ronnie's second in the league in homers with 20, has 58 runs driven in. Into the dirt. Prince, a good play on the short hop. One ball, no strikes. I guess it's only natural when you have a guy of the potential of Ron Gant to worry when you see him get off to a slow start. Look where he is now, though. 262, 20 homers, 58 RBIs. Slow starts are really nothing new to him. He struggles every April, much like Ryan Sandberg up in Chicago. He missed a double by about two feet. And the count evens at one and one. 3-4-0 and oh for the Braves, 2-3-0 and oh for the Pirates. And you see the good work done by Gant as the season has progressed. One and two is the count. The one two pitch. Snap throw to first. Close. He just did get back. Two balls, two strikes. Pendleton was getting a big jump, had his weight going the other way, and when that pitch was outside, Prince's momentum carried him to first. He almost caught Pendleton leaning too far. Tell you what, if Reedus had been half step back he'd have had him two balls two strikes got him with a breaking ball so one young man from Victoria Texas strikes out another I don't think he's thrown Gant anything straight in either at bat all breaking balls got away with one inside but it seems like when he gets two strikes on Ronnie Gant he makes his best pitch. Tommy Gregg is now the batter. Ground ball sharply hit. Bredis plays it with his chest has plenty of time. And the inning is over. No hits, no runs, no errors, and one man left. We've completed three in game one in Atlanta, and the Braves lead 3-2. We go to the fourth inning here. Jose Gonzalez will lead it off for the Pirates who trail in the game 3-2 to the Braves and to Tom Glavin. And as we go to the fourth inning here with the play-by-play -play story, once again, Don Sutton. All right, Skip, thank you very much. Gonzalez, Mania, and McClendon. Braves with three in the first. Pirates answered. Solo homer leading off the ball game from Reedus. Solo homer from McClendon leading off the second. Gonzalez grounded to third his first time up. Has split the year between L.A. and Pittsburgh. Came over in a trade for Mitch Webster. Was 0 for 28 when he left the Dodgers. That's outside ball one. 
Signed as a professional ball player when he was 16 years old. Went to Lethbridge to play in a rookie league. That's the first time he'd ever been out of the Dominican Republic. Takes strike one from Glavin. Career against Tom Glavin. He has been very successful. That's probably why you see his name penciled on a lineup card in game one. Doesn't get this one. It's one and two. Off the fist foul away. It's still a ball and two strikes. On the ground, a Pendleton again with a shot to throw out Gonzalez. High, but Greg stays on the bag. One gone. And here's Mania. Mania was called out on a low inside fastball that I think only Hirschbeck thought was a strike. Greg Olson had already tossed it back to Tom Glavin, and Glavin was ready to throw another pitch. That to end the first inning. At 304, 13 homers, 64 RBIs. Misses the changeup. It's strike one to Benia. Happy birthdays this week to Buck Saunders and Vivian Saunders. Down in Abbeville, Alabama. Foul away. It's 0 and 2. Buck and Vivian always watch the Braves games and friends of Ernie Johnson's. They always watch the Braves games and watch friends of Ernie Johnson's. Is that what you said? No, I said, and they are friends of oh. Ernie Johnson. That's high. It's a ball and two strikes. You take to that analyst role real well. I try to. We all try. On the ground, Belliard surrounds it. Throws to Greg and Benia is gone. Two up and two down here in the fourth inning. Tom Glavin has now set down six in a row. The Pirates only have two hits, both of them solo homers. And McClendon, who has one of those homers, will hit with two outs in the fourth. Vicki Robinson out of Murphy, North Carolina, wants to wish her mom a happy birthday today. Low to McClendon, ball one. Same spot, same result, 2 and 0. Oh. Mr. and Mrs. Bill Bell out of Graceful, Florida. Watch the Braves on TBS and wish their cable company would get Sports South so they could see Chip and Ernie bring them the Braves game. On the ground foul, it's two and one to McClendon. McClendon is one of those players who almost always is in a platoon role and the numbers there would show you why Jim Leland puts him against lefties. And this is the change up to Glavin. It's two and two. A lot of success against lefties but four for thirty two this year against right handers is McClendon. He was involved in a pretty big deal back in 82. He and Charlie Paleo and Jason Felice went from Cincinnati to the Mets for Tom Seaver. He had originally signed with the New York Mets. Three and two to McClendon. Made a stop in Chicago before Pittsburgh got him last year. Glavin misses high. It's ball four. The first base on ball issued by Tom Glavin. only his 
his 27th of the year. The two out walk puts McClendon at first. It'll bring up Wayner. He grounded to third his first time up. High and away. Ball one. He's made five starts. He has hit safely in all five of them. Braves saw enough of him last week to hold him for a while. Went five for five against the Braves last Tuesday. To first, but McClendon was only a step off. Back up the middle to Treadway to Greg. Score at 1 4 3. Glavin with the skate save. And that'll take care of the Pirates here in the fourth inning. McClendon gets the walk. He's left stranded. We have played three and a half here in Atlanta. Bray still lead it 3 2. Time for our Ask Glenn Diamond Braves question of the night. Which comes from Judy Dahl in Carrollton, Georgia. Is there a minimum distance required from home plate to the outfield fences? Good question. The answer is as of June 1st, 1958, baseball rules say you have to have at least 325 feet down the line and at least 400 feet to center. Treadway will lead off the fourth for the Braves, leading at 3 2. Drabeck's first one misses inside ball one. Treadway double his last time up, gave the Braves a lead. Pendleton and Greg scored in front of him. Outside 2 and 0 to Treadway. Personally I like baseball better when they didn't have all those rules. They had ballparks like the polo grounds. And when they had to build them to accommodate the city lots or blocks or whatever was there. Yes. That's a strike. It's 2 and 1 to Treadway. They said, here's a, a city block now fit your ballpark on it. If there's a minimum why isn't there a maximum. Answer me that. Fouled away. It's two and two. I don't know. This is my play-by-play -play time, not analyst time. Sorry, I shouldn't have asked you a question. It's my mistake. Pete will be over in a minute or two. I'll ask him, and he'll. he'll I'll, and not only he'll will I ask him, he'll know. <laughs> two and two to Treadway. Three-two Braves. Bottom of the fourth inning. Game one up two here. Nice play by Drayback. He'll throw out Treadway. One gone. See if he's all right. He looked like he's loosening himself up a little bit. He went down hard as he fielded it. Well, let's look at it again. If he doesn't make the play, I think Treadway's got an infield hit. It was hit so softly. Well, he came down hard. Looked like he landed hard on his left knee and then jarred the upper part of his body when he landed. Looks like he's all right. He's back on the mound. He'll face Olsen. Olsen fly to center. He's 0 for 1. Curveball is there. Strike one. To left field. Pretty deep. McClendon is back to the wall. Out of here. 4-2 Braves. something like this you wonder how many other guys are mired in the minor leagues that if given the chance would do the same thing a fastball up and he really ripped it. And Belliard will hit three in the first one in the fourth for the Braves the Pirates with one in the first and one in the second. Belliard fly to right his first time up. Fouls it away it's one and one. Rafael at 226, no homers, 20 RBIs. Has been relegated to pretty much a defensive specialist. Originally, that's what many people thought he was signed here for, was to come in and play the eighth and ninth inning in a Braves lead. Got off to such a good start in spring training. 
He did a good job, but Bobby Cox trying to inject a little more offense into the lineup. Has moved Blouser into the spot. That misses high. It's two and one to Bell Yard. If you keep up with such things, the measured distance for Olsen's home run, 391 feet. Toward right field. That's going to get in between them. Bonilla. Gonzalez will chase it to the wall. Belliard headed for two, now headed for three. He'll go in in the slide. It's a triple for Belliard. Another fastball, not much honored at all, right down the heart of the plate. And Jimmy Williams, a good job of coaching. He ran into short left field and was waving Belliard on. And he makes it easily. Triple number two on the year for Belliard. The Braves with a chance to add one more. Tom Glavin will be the batter. Glavin singled his last time up. Shot one in the hole between Wayner and Bell. Who has more triples this year, Rafael Belliard or Otis Nixon? Right off the top of the head, you'd have to say Nixon. Doesn't have a single one. Isn't that amazing? It is. With all that speed, and with the fact that he is a line drive type hitter. Pirates will bring the infield in. Drebeck trying to get Belliard or Glavin to commit in case the squeeze is on. Jimmy Williams will run through a new set of signs for Glavin. He'll turn and walk to Belliard and talk to him and tell him if there's anything on. 4-2 Braves, one out. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Here comes Bell. He fakes. It sure looked like Belliard was coming. Lavin comes up empty on the swing. It's strike one. Unlike most pitchers, they don't play Glavin. Shaded all the way around the left field. They play him like a legitimate hitter. Foul the way it's 0-2 to Tom. A look at the defense. You can see almost straight away in center. The only concession they make is the right field line as his. And the infield, they give him the middle of the diamond. The 0 and 2 to Glavin. And Drebeck gets the strikeout. Two gone for Drebeck, his fourth strikeout of the day. This is one of the best breaking balls he's thrown. Look at that. Bottom drop out of that. The strikeout he needed to keep Belliard at third. And Otis Nixon will bat with two gone. Nixon has single, stolen a base, and scored on on a fielder's choice as was thrown out trying to steal in the second inning. Otis with 55 steals for the year. Graybeck's curveball misses its ball one. The curveball seems to be getting sharper and sharper now. We've talked about it before. There are some pitchers, and usually they're veteran pitchers, that Sometimes it takes them a little while to get going, and if you don't get them in the first and second, they're impossible to get later on in the game. There's a curveball. It's a dandy. Strike one. Another breaking ball misses. It's two and one to Nixon. Drebeck with all breaking balls to Nixon misses outside. It's three and one. Deion Sanders would hit if Otis can get on. Looped in the left center. McClendon will get there and make the catch. That'll do it for Nixon. That'll do it for the Braves here in the fourth inning. But they get one more on Greg Olson's solo homer. Lee Belliard stranded at third. We have completed four in Atlanta. Braves lead it 4 2.
either is going to be a curveball pitcher or a producer. He's got the motions for both. Nice catch. Skip, don't say anything for once in your life, Skip. Don't say anything. Lean Prince and Drayback. First three do up in the fifth inning. Dodge Hutton, Skip Carey with you. Game one of a doubleheader here from Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Mailer and Smiley scheduled to go against each other in game two. Toward right field near the line and fair. It'll be a base hit for Lean. He'll settle for one. So the Pirates get the leadoff single here in the fifth inning. And we'll send up Tom Prince, the catcher. Prince should be very familiar to the Braves people up in the front office. Back in 1983, they drafted him twice. Once in the January draft, and then again in the June draft. To first, but Lean was only a step off. Brace picked him in the eighth round in January. The fourth round in June, he didn't sign. Pittsburgh got him in the fourth round in 1984. Again, the throw to first. That's a strike to Prince. Last time up, grounded into a 6 4 3 double play. Glavin would take that again. Again, the throw to first. Lean is not one that really runs a lot. As a matter of fact, this year he's only attempted one steal against lefties. On the ground, another shot for two off Pendleton's glove. They won't be able to make a play. We'll see how they score it. It's going to be an error on Pendleton. Yeah, you at first you thought double play. That's a ball just didn't come up quite like Terry thought that should have been an air. Here's another look. In between hops. Looked like he didn't know whether to go and catch it on the short hop or back up and play it on the big one. That'll put a pirate at first, one at second. Still nobody out in the fifth inning. And Drabeck is the batter. Braves looking bunt. Pendleton in talking to Glavin. Pendleton is the quarterback when the Braves defense the situation with the runner at second or first and second with a bun in order. Lean at second, Prince at first. The wheel is on. Drayback squared to bunt, was going to swing away. Glavin misses inside, ball one. Well, they had guessed right. The Pirates had. They had that infield all broken up. Well, there are three or four things you can do off this bunt play defensively, aren't there? Yeah, the wheel play. You can uh, just have the third baseman stay back and let the pitcher cover the third baseline. Or you can have both the third baseman and first baseman charge. Leave somebody at second. Pendleton has flashed a new set of signs to the rest of his infielders and to Tom Glavin. The 1 and 0 to Drayback. He's bunting this time, but takes low. It's 2 and 0. Drayback, one of those pitchers that his manager has enough respect for his ability to hit, he might turn him loose in this situation. Gene Lamont calling him down instead of giving him signs. Gene Lamont, a well respected coach in the big leagues, and a guy whose name keeps popping up as one of the possible managers for one of the expansion franchises. The 2 0 to Drayback. Instead, Glavin fakes to second. Taking it's three and zero. Oh.
This is one of those things you don't see very often from Tom Glavin. It's also one of those things that will drive a manager nuts. They're thinking they're going to give you an out. Let's get one. There's a strike. Three and one to Drayback. Drayback hitting 176 has struck out 14 times. He has only sacrificed successfully twice all year long. Jay Bell leads the world in that category. Fouls it away. It's three and two. I've got the home plate umpire Mark Hirsch back on the back of the right hand. And he tries to walk that off. He really got stung. He doesn't have good form bunting, does he? He's almost like a half swing. No, he doesn't have it at all. And the term is sacrifice, which means to give yourself up and get around comfortable and just try to bunt the ball back out front. He's got the bat going forward, whereas the guys who bunt well have it going backward. To deaden the ball. Three and two. Olsen, Pendleton flashing signs out to the infielders. Again the bunt. This time it's a good one. Pendleton looks like he'll only have one play. That's the first, and they just barely get Dre back. So the sacrifice works. The Pirates have him at second and third with one out. The top of the order coming up. Terry had a pretty good idea here. He knew he didn't have a play at third. Thought he might with the catcher running at second, but he didn't figure on Drayback running as hard as he did down the line, and they made a very close play out of a 5 4 sacrifice. And Gary Reedus will bat with one out. Reedus started it off well for the Pirates. Picked on the second pitch from Tom Glavin, hit it over the left field fence. A solo homer, his fourth of the year. Popped to Tommy Gregg at first, his last time up. Braves will play the infield back. They'll give up a run to get the out. Back our way, it's 0 and 1. Pirates with the best one loss record in baseball have really turned it on the second half offensively. 278 as a team the first half is not bad but look at the numbers since the All Star break. Owen one to Reedus, leaned at third Prince at second one gone. Outside with the change up it's a ball and a strike. Don, we want to wish an old friend and a, really an acquaintance good luck, Jan Hooks, who used to be with TBS years ago, then with Saturday Night Live. She's now on Designing Women. And her debut is right around the corner. She's a nice gal. Toward right center field, Nixon will get to it, but it'll be deep enough to score a lean. The throw will come in to second. Prince to third. It's a 4-3 Braves lead. Pirates still have a runner at third. The batter is Jay Bell. Bell has popped to first. He has flied to center. 0 for 2. Came into the game 12 out of his last 16. Low with the changeup, ball one. Bell was saying earlier this year it's interesting playing or it's fun playing for Jim Leland. He said everybody else has always told him that he was a good defensive player. That's through the hard strike one. Not to worry about the offense. But Jim Leland has him believing in his ability to hit. He said the defense will take care of itself. He hit 258 and 254 in two years with the Pirates. 30 points above that right now. Change up misses. It's two and one. And there's a pretty good chance that Jay Bell has a pretty good pass list here this week. From the Northwest Florida area down in Pensacola. Graduated from Tate High School in Gonzales. To center field, a little looper. Gant will not be able to get to it. We have ourselves a tie ball game. A looping single from Bell scores Prince.
If he hits this harder, it's an out. But he got it right off the end of the bat. You can see Glavin knew it the second it went by him. This is not the kind of game you figured a Drayback Glavin matchup would be, is it? No, it's not. Maybe 2 1, 1 to nothing. But not 4 4, not even halfway through it. Here's Gonzalez. Comes up empty on the fastball. It's strike one. Twice as grounded to Terry Pendleton. On the corner, 0 and 2. Foul away. It's still 0-2 to Gonzalez. Got him. Glavin gets the strikeout of Gonzalez. That is strikeout number three for Tom. But not before the Pirates get a pair to get even. They do it on a couple of singles and an error. They leave a man stranded. We played four and a half. We're all tied at four. Bottom half of the fifth inning. It's now a 4-4 ball game. Uh, the Braves send Sanders, Pendleton, and Gant to the plate. And standing in with a play-by-play -play story, here's Pete Van Weeren. Okay, thank you, Skip. It's the kind of game that we anticipated. A few more runs than we anticipated. But whenever you get a hookup between a Cy Young winner of a year ago and a guy that's buying for one this year, you look for a close ball game. Deion Sanders 0 for 2, struck out in the first inning. He fly to right in the third. Tell you one thing the Braves have really found out about Deion this year, and I think it applies to his football as well. He doesn't get the breaking ball 0 and 1. Braves were a little bit surprised by his work habits, how hard he works to become a better player. And I noticed yesterday I sat across from him on the bus going to the airport in Chicago. He's already doing his Falcons homework, studying rosters of upcoming opponents, looking at the draft choices and free agents. But right now he's 0 for 3 in this one. As Reedus takes care of it, Deanne will be leaving on Thursday to join the Atlanta Falcons. Now Terry Pendleton who doubled in a run in the first inning drew a walk in the third. He was really pitched around in the third. As hot as he's been up to 340 now. Ball one downstairs to Pendleton. Career highs possible in all three of those categories for Terry Pendleton this year. Sharply hit right side, another base hit into right field. And his remarkable season continues. He's perfect tonight, two for two with a walk. What's the difference in Terry Pendleton? Well, what you have seen him do twice tonight, pulling the ball. Is something he kind of got away from his last couple of years in St. Louis. He was going almost always up the middle and trying to go the other way. Braves got him back to taking the inside pitch and trying to pull it, not only as it shot his batting average way up, but it's also looking like his best power year in his career. Now, Ronnie Gadu has really had trouble with Drabeck. 0 for 2 tonight, 3 for 23 in his career. Going 1. There's your runner at first, Terry Pendleton. We are tied at four in game one, bottom half of the fifth. It's even now a ball and a strike. Graybeck, his last two times out against the Braves. He got the win last week in Pittsburgh, but his control has not been nearly as sharp as we have seen him in previous outings.
Back to first Terry Pendleton one man out. Breaking ball misses two and one. He's really only on about a 50 50 ratio tonight with balls and strikes. He is a pitcher who can pitch behind in the count. I don't think he had planned on being behind as many hitters as he has been in tonight's game. He's been working two and one, three and one on a lot of guys. It's three and one to run again. It was an interesting decision Jim Leland made to skip going with 10 pitchers when a doubleheader kicks off your week. I think they're going to be bringing a guy up tomorrow, sending a guy up, bringing another guy up Wednesday, sending a guy out to get around it a little bit. But it forces your hand a little bit in sticking with your starter. There has been no bullpen activity yet in this first game for the Pirates. Another great throw by Prince, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's ball four to run again. The third walk issued by Doug Grayback. Runners are at first and second. And Tommy Gregg will be the hitter. And now it looks like we will get some bullpen activity for the first time tonight down in the Pirate Pen. Vicente Palacios and Bob Kipper appear to be getting ready to throw. Well, maybe just Kipper. Greg tonight has walked and grounded out to first. Braves trying to grab back the lead, tied at four, first and second, one out. It's been the curveball that Drebeck has had the most trouble with tonight. He's not been able to throw that pitch consistently for strikes. Fastball missing, two and zero oh on Tommy Gregg. He is all over the place in this inning. And here comes Ray Miller out to have a chat with Doug Graybeck. This will buy a little time for Kipper out in the Pirate Pen. There's not a whole lot that Ray Miller can tell Doug Graybeck right now that Graybeck already doesn't know. Greg has really struggled with runners in scoring position. He's just one out of 14. So he's due. Still only has just one RBI for the year. I think Tommy Gregg wishes and I'm, I'm sure every player wishes this but Tommy especially he wishes he could get through the first six to eight weeks of the season without having an injury that's going to knock him out for about a month. And I know he'd love a chance to be an everyday player somewhere. He's been close a couple of times but has never really nailed on a job. And then last year when he was such a good pinch hitter it was sort of assumed that would be his role this year. But he doesn't get many at bats. This is only his. 61st official at bat of the year if it's an official one. It's 2 and 0 to him right now with one out. Dribble down the first base side. Drebeck will play it safe, go to first. Little swinging bunt gets the runners down to second and third. And with two outs, Jeff Treadway will hit. Treadway doubled in a couple in the first inning, was thrown out pitcher to first and the fourth. He's got runners on at second and third in a 4-4 game. And they're not going to pitch to him. So Greg Olson, who homered his last time up, will get a chance to hit with the bases loaded. And the one thing Jim Leland and Ray Miller are happy about right now is the big lead they've got in the East it'll buy them a little time to get through this situation where they've got one starting pitcher on the disabled list Bob Walk and a heavy schedule of games coming up in the next couple of weeks. But they've got a big enough cushion to maybe get themselves through it. Well here's Olsen hit home run number five with nobody on base back in the fourth inning he's also flying out to center. 
Terry Pendleton at third, Ronnie Gant at second, Jeff Treadway at first with two down. the corner. Nothing in one on Greg Olson. Good block by Prince. It's one and one. Olson hit seven home runs in the major league debut last year has five already this year so he too could reach a career high in that category. Two balls and a strike. And the 2 1. It's 3 and 1 now to Olsen. One more bad one would force him to go ahead run. As Graybeck continues to struggle with control. The 3 1 usually a hitter's pitch. So Olsen can look for something here. Here it comes from Graybeck. He walked it. Ways lead. And drives in his 26th run with a bases loaded walk to make it 5 4 Atlanta. No movement from the Pirate dugout with a right hand batter, Rafael Belliard, coming up. His last time up against Graybeck, he hit the ball maybe as hard as we've seen him hit it all year. A triple into the gap in right center field. Who'd have figured this would be a game like this with these two guys picking? This game is so unpredictable. Doug Graybeck, who really has been settling down a little bit the last six or seven weeks after a very rocky start and as we indicated last week against Atlanta a little shaky even though he survived and got the win but there he goes to work on Belliard the strike zone shrinks even more now foul back by Raffaello and one that's been tough to handicap all the Braves games lately wind blowing in at Wrigley Field look at all the home runs we had <laughs> Mark Lemke is beginning to loosen up now in the Atlanta bullpen. Belliard drills one to left, but it's right at McClendon. And that takes care of Atlanta in the fifth inning. But the Braves regain the lead on a bases loaded walk to Greg Olson after five in game one, Atlanta five, and Pittsburgh four. This Friday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, TNT brings you the opening ceremonies and a preview of the Pan American Games from Havana, Cuba. TNT's coverage runs through August 18th, so tune in starting this Friday at 8 o'clock on TNT. Mark Lemke takes over at second base for Atlanta as we move to the top half of the sixth inning. And Brian Hunter takes over at first. So the Braves get the lead. Bobby Cox tries to shore up the defense and hold on to it. Behind Tom Glavin, who's trying to match his career high in victories tonight, seeking his 14th. It'll be Bobby Bonilla, Lloyd McClendon, John Wainer. Do up in the sixth. Bonilla has struck out and grounded out. The ground out came to short in the fourth. in the air Greg Olson 
Now bails out and gets his mask out of the way for Terry Pendleton. Some pretty alert and quick thinking by Greg Olson there. One down. I don't think he ever had any idea where that ball was. You can I don't see either. He and Hirschbeck laughing about it now. He, he was screaming for help and wanted to get out of the way, but didn't know where to go because he didn't know where the ball was. Watch Olson. It's up there somewhere. Whoops. No, that's not going to work. Never has a catcher moved so much for so little. But it's good for the first out here in the top of the sixth inning, and Lloyd McClendon, who has homered and walked, steps in. He takes a strike from Glavin on one. Kipper still working out in the Pirate bullpen, so even if we don't get to the pitcher's spot here, you may see a new Pirate pitcher in the bottom half of the inning. And the 0 1 on the way, a little tap toward third should be easy for Terry Pendleton. Took a little bit of a funny hop, but he stays with it and throws out McClendon two down. Now, third baseman John Weiner, who has grounded out twice in the game, once to third and once to second. Tommy Glavin's control perhaps the most remarkable part of his season this year and it's being demonstrated again tonight even though he has been reached for four runs. He has thrown 74 pitches 55 strikes in the game. And falls behind for one of the few times tonight to John Weiner. One ball, one strike now, and the rookie third baseman. The Pirates hope that they have solved a little bit of a problem on their ball club at third with Wainer. He's red hot right now. You don't know how long that'll last. But after Jeff King got hurt, they tried a lot of different combinations. And we're not really happy either offensively or defensively with any of them. They had Wilkerson play over there a little bit, Bobby Bonilla play over there a little bit. Looked like they were going to get Jeff King then back and then he went back down again. So they gave this kid a chance and so far it's worked. Upstairs with a fastball two and two. Five forward ladder Braves about hit the Pirates seven five. And the two two to Wayner a little ground ball out towards second again Lemke has this one. On to Hunter, and that's all for Pittsburgh in the sixth. Glavin gets him one, two, three. We played five and a half in tonight's first game. It's still five, four, Atlanta. We move to the bottom half of the sixth inning. Atlanta with a one run lead. We have a new pitcher for Pittsburgh. Left hander Bob Kipper replaces Doug Drabeck. You see the numbers on Kipper, who makes his 33rd appearance, all in relief for the Pirates this year. Control was Doug Drabeck's undoing tonight. He worked five innings, allowed seven hits, five runs, all earned, five walks, including a bases loaded walk that forced in the go ahead run. And he struck out four. Kipper, 6'2, 185, out of Aurora, Illinois, still lives there in the offseason. He's the young man who has to go and take special exercises every day of his life because of a lower back condition that he was. Afflicted with early on. Tommy Glavin's going to try to bunt his way on. Kipper fields. He gets the throw on to Reedus just in time. Glavin now one for three. And back we go now to the top of the order. Otis Nixon. But he has a condition. His lower vertebrae has some inflammation. And every day, Kipper, not just during the season, but 365 days a year, has to undergo a regimen of exercises to stretch out that lower back. Nixon's base hit came in the first inning giving him a 17 game hitting streak third longest in the National League this year. The let up low and away ball one. Neil Heaton now up in the pirate pen. It's two and oh now on Otis Nixon. Hey. 
in for a strike. Two balls, one strike, the count of notice. You've been hearing about the great pirate road record this year. And it has been a terrific one. 31 and 15. And those numbers reflect the individuals too. Kipper's ERA on the road right around one at home about eight. Nice play by Wayner. He throws on to first in time to get Otis Nixon. And two men are gone now in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Look at that. You hardly ever see that big a difference the other way around. And there's that road record the Pirates have that we've been telling you about. But now Deion Sanders, who is 0 for 3. He has struck out, fly to right, grounded out to first. 5-4, Braves leading it, bottom half of the sixth inning. Pete Van Oren, Skip Carey with you from Atlanta. <laughs> As the Braves begin a 14-game homestand. That should say an awful lot about what this season is going to be in September. One and one the count now, and Deion Sanders doesn't face many lefties. Doesn't face especially many lefties who throw as much off-speed stuff as Kipper. Got the fastball by in there. It's one and two. Sanders is gone. A one, two, three inning for Kipper. He just went up the ladder on Dion, and that's all for Atlanta in the sixth. Nothing across for the Braves through six in game one. Still 5 4 Braves. This Sunday, TNT kicks off its second season of NFL coverage. The Redskins meet the Steelers in Pittsburgh. That's Sunday at 8 o'clock on TNT. You'll be joined by Pat Hayden for another season of TNT NFL coverage. And it'll be Pat and me, about 320 players, no three deeps, no preseason guides. It's going to be a lot of fun. You need six deeps for that first exhibition game. I know it. There's Jose Lane to a single a couple of times. Glavin working with a one run lead here, 5 4, seventh inning. Ball and no strikes on lean. Lean to Prince and then Kipper do up. But Neil Heaton's in the bullpen, so we'll see a pinch hitter for the pitcher. Got the fastball by him. One ball, one strike. Pete will give a little clue to the baseball fans who might be watching that game when they hear that's complete second and two or dive play for three. That means you don't have any idea either who caught it or who's running it. Or who tackled it. That's right. One one fly ball straight away center. Should be no problem for Ronnie Gann, and it's not. One down. So Glavin, after giving up the run scoring single to Jay Bell in the fifth inning that tied up the ball game, has settled down, retired five straight. And here's the young catcher, Tom Prince, who is 0 for 2. He's hit into a 6 4 3 double play, and he reached on the error by Pendleton. Hit deep to left field. Deion Sanders watching this one go off the wall. Prince on his way to second. And he'll go in sliding with a double. Oh, a little unexpected power from Tom Prince who's never really put up very big batting averages in the minor leagues. But Glavin really hung a pitch there. And this base hit on the high curveball will get Kipper out of the game. Sanders makes this a close play at second base. He plays it well. He's got a good arm. The pinch hitter will be Curtis Wilkerson. Just had a little by play go on there while. Greg Olson was out talking to Tom Glavin between first base up Dana DeMuth. And I think it's Barry Bonds that's sitting just outside the 
pirate dugout. He brought a folding chair out there. Like you see in spring training, managers always sit in folding chairs outside the dugout. Dana DeMuth went over toward the mound, was hollering something at the pirate dugout. That must have been it because the folding chair that Barry was sitting on is now gone. The strike zone is now from the knees to the belt. And they're worried about whether you sit on a folding chair. Well, here's Wilkerson. You saw his numbers. 202 for the year. He takes a strike. He's a much better right hand hitter. 292 right handed. Just 176 left handed. And Glavin quickly out in front 0 and 2. Braves bullpen stirs for the first time. As Marvin Freeman and Kent Merker begin to loosen. Get one more inning out of Glavin. You start getting into Juan Berenguer territory. Here's the 0-2 to Wilkerson. Fouled it off. Still nothing in two. When this guy first signed, very big batting averages in the minor leagues. But Glavin really hung a pitch there. And this base hit on the high curveball will get Kipper out of the game. Sanders makes this a close play at second base. He plays it well. He's got a good arm. The pinch hitter will be Curtis Wilkerson. Just had a little by play go on there while Greg Olson was out talking to Tom Glavin between first base ump Dana DeMuth. And I think it's Barry Bonds that's sitting just outside the pirate dugout. He brought a folding chair out there. Like you see in spring training, managers always sit in folding chairs outside the dugout. Dana DeMuth went over toward the mound, was hollering something at the pirate dugout. That must have been it because the folding chair that Barry was sitting on is now gone. The strike zone is now from the knees to the belt. And they're worried about whether you sit on a folding chair. Well, here's Wilkerson. You saw his numbers. 202 for the year. He takes a strike. He's a much better right hand hitter. 292 right hand. Just 176 left handed. Quickly out in front 0 and 2. Braves bullpen stirs for the first time. As Marvin Freeman and Kent Merker begin to loosen. Get one more inning out of Glavin. You start getting into Juan Berenguer territory. Here's the 0-2 to Wilkerson. Fouled it off. Still nothing in two. When this guy first signed it was with the Texas Rangers and they thought he was going to be their long term shortstop but was never quite able to nail down that spot over with the Rangers or if he did get a chance to play didn't, didn't hit enough to keep that spot one and two now so now he's learned to play other positions he can fill it at second or third. Lavin's got the potential tying run out at second to worry about with one out. Bought that one off. It's still one and two. Speaking of potential phenoms, Ryan Klusko hit another home run for Greenville last night. He's having a good solid year over there. And I think the Braves are right doing what they are with him. When they promoted Brian Hunter, they could have promoted Ryan Klusko from double A AA to triple A. But at age 19, get yourself a good solid season into the double A level. Put up the numbers, as the scouts like to say. Oh, that was close. It's two and two on Wilkerson. Here's another look at that one. Tommy thought he had him struck out. I think it was outside. One man out. Prince down at second. Five four Braves, and game one we're in the top of the seventh. And Glavin's two two. 
on the way down to Wilkerson. The fastball missing inside. It's full now. Three and two. Gary Reedus on deck. Here's the three two now to Wilkerson fly ball deep left field Deion Sanders back to the warning track leaping catch out on the track pulls onto it and fires back toward third Prince has to stay put at second and that's some of the natural ability that John Sherholtz and Bobby Cox rave about with Deion Sanders. He actually jumped a little early on that ball caught it on the way down but. Made the play with one to me. He covered a lot of ground with that leap too. It was like a broad jump. So a fine defensive play by Sanders out in left field preserves the 5-4 lead. With a runner at second, Bobby Cox jogged out of the dugout. That normally means he's not going to make a, a change, but we'll see. He does have Marvin Freeman ready if needed out in the bullpen from the right side. Marker the left-hander also out there. Batter Gary Reedus has driven into the Pirate runs tonight, a leadoff homer in the first and a sack fly to right in the fifth. And it'll be Glavin's job to get Reedus. Three hits, a single, a double, and a home run he hit tonight. Leading off the ball game. A ball and no strikes. A couple of ways you can look at a number like that. Either Reedus owns Tom Glavin at the moment, or Glavin is due to get him out. Bobby Cox betting that it's Glavin's turn. One ball, one strike, and Reedus. See if he follows that fastball with the changeup. Nope, another fastball. It's fouled back one and two. Now he might have Rita set up for the change. And now Olson's going to go out and make sure he and Glavin are thinking the same way in this one two pitch. You've also got a catcher down at second base who might be a pretty good sign stealer. So this could be a situation where Greg Olson signals for one pitch and if Prince has got the signs Glavin might throw something else. They've already decided what the good, what the pitch is going to be now whether the signals that Olson gives calls for that pitch or not. It's something we don't know. Here's the one two pitch. He just missed outside two and two. He did give him the change up there. Now the two two on the way. Good stop by Olson. Full count three and two on Gary Reedus. Jay Bell on deck. Bell has been a red hot pirate hitter. And if Glavin loses Reedus, you can almost bet the mortgage that it'll be Marvin Freeman coming into the game. Now the 3 2 on the way, and he does lose him. Up high with a fastball. Only the second walk of the game issued by Glavin. 
But it now puts Pirate runners at first and second with two men out. And let's see if Bobby's going to stick with his ace here or go to the pen. He's going to let him try one more hitter. I guess what he's thinking is it's either Glavin against Bell or it's Bonds against Freeman. But he's going to take his chances with Glavin against Bell. Bell does have a single and an RBI tonight. He has 13 hits in his last 19 at bats. Now 288 for the year. The changeup for a strike in the outside corner 0 and 1. There are your runners. Radis at first, Prince at second. He's going to get out of it. Right at the second baseman, Mark Lemke. On to Hunter. And Glavin strands two pirate runners here in the seventh inning. So it's seventh inning stretch time here in game one with our score Atlanta five and Pittsburgh four. There's your score as they move to the bottom half of the seventh inning. The Pirates are on their third pitcher of this first game. Left-hander Neil Heaton. You see the numbers on him. That second win he posted a very, very important one. And when you're trying to win a division, it takes outings like this. It came last Friday night in Houston when Bob Walk was the starter and had to leave the game after one inning. He got injured, injured a leg running the bases. Heaton took over in the second. And he went four and two-thirds innings. Holding the Houston ball club, earning the victory. Are the kind of games that oh, they only happen once or twice a year where a starting pitcher goes down that early. And when you can win those and get a great effort out of a, really the ninth or tenth man on your pitching staff, that's how you win division. Well, here's Terry Pendleton who hasn't cooled off at all since coming home. A double, a walk, a single, two runs scored, one RBI. And Heaton's first pitch to him. Nothing and one on Terry Pendleton. Terry with his wide variety of batting stances and spots that he chooses to stand in the batter's box drives this one to right center field. Gonzalez coming over. He'll get there. One down. And that'll bring up Ronnie Gadd, who's glad to be looking at anybody but Doug Graybeck. Graybeck struck him out twice tonight, but he did walk yet back in the fifth inning. That's when control became a real problem for Graybeck. Three walks in the inning, one intentional. And one coming with the bases loaded to give the Braves the lead. Now Gant faces the left-hander. It's obvious that someone, probably Ray Miller, got to Neil Heaton and said, you need to be a little more herky-jerky in your motion. He has a very unusual way of flying that arm against his leg when he starts his motion. Some pitchers have such a fluid motion and hitters can really pick up the ball. But Heaton never used to pitch this way. Watch that left arm of his kind of slap his leg before he reaches into his glove for the ball. Right there. One and two. Bottom of the seventh, 5 4 Atlanta in game two tonight. Rick Mailer against John Smiley. Here's the 1 2 to Gant. Moved him off the plate with a fastball, 2 and 2. Whenever Ronnie Gant sees a fastball anymore, that's almost always what pitchers are trying to do with it. Just move him off the plate. They don't want to leave it out over the plate because he has shown 20 pitchers what he can do with that pitch. Not so many home runs he has this year. Full count now, three and two. He loses him. 
Down to first with a walk for the second time tonight goes Gant. Heaton's first walk, six walks now issued by Pirate Pitching. In this first game, and now Brian Hunter will bat for the first time. Hunter just three for his last 29, but two of those three hits have been homers. Very similar hitter to Ronnie Gant. He really handles the inside fastball very well. And for that reason, is seeing a lot of breaking balls and off speed pitches away lately. That one missed outside. Ball one. Now called a strike by Mark Hirschbeck. So a borderline call there by Hirschbeck. And Heaton's ahead on the count. One out, Gant aboard. Now it's even. One ball, one strike, and Brian Hunter. Mark Lemke on deck. Gant has stolen 16 this year. Count goes to two and one on Hunter. Rents to the mound. Every time we say Prince to the mound, if Prince takes a lead, you feel like you're on MTV. They were looking long term at a, at a lineup that was going to have Prince behind the plate and King at third, and there were all kinds of headline writers drooling over that combination. But Jeff King has been injured most of this year, and Prince really hasn't been able to make that final step from AAA to the major leagues. His major league time the last three years has just been filling in. There's the 2 1. It's even now on Hunter 2 and 2. Five runs, seven hits for Atlanta, four runs, six hits for the Pirates. Braves have made the only error of tonight's first game. One man out with Gant, the runner at first. Heaton goes over to first. He has never really had a great move to first base. It's almost a balk move. Gant is going. The 2 2 is low. Prince fires wildly into center field. Gant takes off to third. Stolen base number 17 by Ronnie Gant. And this time, Prince charged with an error, allowing Gant to get to third. Well, that changes the inning around. All of a sudden, the runner at third base instead of first. Tough pitch to handle, low and away, and the throw just tailed on him. Lean couldn't knock it down, and Gant. Down and up, slide is off for third. And look how this changes the way the defense plays in the infield. They have to come in. A fly ball now gets a run in. This will make it into the seat. Still three and two on Brian Hunter. insurance would help here. The Pirates have been averaging nine runs a game over their last five games and have a lot of hot hitters in the batting order and a lot of ammunition left on the bench with Bonds and Van Slyke. Three two to Hunter down the left field line hooking toward that corner. This ball is gone. 
Hunter picks out a 3 2 pitch and hits his seventh home run of the year. It's 7 to 4. Kid has a chance to be some hitter. Tried to get the fastball in on him. Won't try to do that again. It curled just inside the pole. So a two run homer by Brian Hunter makes it 7 4 Atlanta. Now Mark Lemke bats for the first time. 223 for the year. One ball, no strikes. Seven homers, 108 at bats for Hunter. You project that over a year, you got yourself a potent home run hitter. One ball, one strike. Jimmy Leland seeing this one slip away, perhaps. Two balls and a strike now on Lemke. Hunter also hit nine home runs at Richmond this year, so he has hit 16 home runs this year at the two levels. Slowly out toward short where Jay Bell grabs it and fires on to first in time, two down. And now another of the brave heroes in this first game so far, Greg Olson. His fly to center homered and walked. Two RBIs. The walk came with the bases loaded. One and nothing, the count on Olsen. It's even now on Greg Olsen. One ball, one strike. Drabeck worked the first five, allowed five runs, seven hits, walked five. Kipper had a one, two, three, sixth. But Neil Heaton touched for a two run homer after walking Ronnie Gant here in the seventh inning. And the count two and one now on Olsen. The 2 1 is popped up foul, first base side. It'll drift out of play. Two balls, two strikes. Rafael Belliard on deck. Now the 2 2 coming. Still two and two on Greg Olson. Again, the two two on the way. He got him. Fastball at the knees. Olsen didn't think so. Complains about it to Hirschbeck. Still talking to him. He thought it was low. But Eaton will get credit for the strikeout. And that'll do it for the Braves in the seventh. Take another look at strike three called to Olsen. Braves scored two on the Brian Hunter homer. We've played seven in game one at 7-4 Atlanta.
A look at our Delta schedule for tonight. Nothing yet underway. St. Louis plays at Houston. Bryn Smith against Jim Deshays. Montreal at San Francisco. Brian Barnes goes against John Burkett. And New York plays at Los Angeles with David Cohn against Tim Belcher. A few more games than that scheduled in the American League, and they're not yet underway. Well, they're just getting ready to go in New York. Oakland and the Yankees. Jeff Johnson against Eric Shaw. Everything else later. California at Cleveland. Finley's going for his 14th. Chicago plays at Toronto. McDowell and Wells each going for their 13th. Texas plays at Boston. Detroit plays at Minnesota. Baltimore plays at Seattle. For complete scores and highlights, tune in to CNN Sports tonight at 11 Eastern time. Fred Hickman and Nick Charles will have them for you. Greenville underway at Knoxville. No score after one. Turk Wendell pitching tonight for Greenville. We go to the eighth inning. It is 7-4 Atlanta. Here's Skip. Hey, Pete. Thanks very much. Jose Gonzalez with laid it off against Tom Glavin, who has struggled tonight but has a chance to pick up number 14, a better than average chance. He has a three run lead. Mailer and Smiley will pitch the nightcap. Gonzalez 0 for 3 is twice bounced to third, once struck out. Breaking ball, a little inside. One ball, no strikes. That's in there, it's one and one. To the screen, a ball and two strikes. Braves trying to win their 50th game in this first one. They didn't win their 50th game last year until August 28th. What a difference. Didn't mean to, excuse me, grounder to short. Belliard, one done. And Gonzalez is 0 for 4. Here's Bonilla. Bonilla at 3.05, 13 homers, 64 runs driven in. Fastball inside, one ball, no strikes. The pitch let up, caught the corner. One and one is the count. Let up, and he pulled it foul over by the dugout. It's one and two. The one two ground ball hit to third Pendleton up and throwing so two are out in a hurry here's Lloyd McClendon one out of two that a home run and in his life eight out of 16 against Tom Glavin. Between games of our doubleheader, we'll show you Hogan's Heroes and then be back with John Smiley against Rick Miller. Curveball just missed inside. One ball, no spin.
Three balls and a strike. There's a drive. His second of the night. A blue seat special. Seven to five. McClendon now nine out of 17 against Marvin. That's one of those pitches you really want to take back as soon as you release it if you're Tom Glavin. You saw him start to flinch almost at the moment he released the pitch. He's had a lot of trouble with McClendon. He throws it right down the middle and knew right where it was going as soon as he heard contact. Olsen to the mound to give Marvin Freeman a little time to get ready. And here comes Bobby Cox, and that might do it for Tom Glavin. If you're going to go to your bullpen, you want to give him a little margin for error. He hasn't gestured yet, but we shall see. They talk it over. Wainer is yet to get the ball out of the infield, but that'll do it for Glavin. And Marvin Freeman will get the call here in the eighth inning. And as Freeman comes in, we'll go out for this. Freeman gets the call. You see the story in game one of our doubleheader. In his last 28 and two thirds innings, covering 21 games, Freeman has allowed five earned runs, a 1.57 ERA. And Bobby Cox's confidence, obviously, up in Marvin Freeman. He was never allowed to pitch in a spot like this for about the first third of the season. John Wayner, the batter 0 for 3 on the night. He's got about as odd a batting stance as anybody in the, in the National League. It doesn't look like he could hit anything. Fast, because he has to pull the bat all the way back before he starts. 2 and 0 the count. Olsen to the mound for a word with Freeman. There's a strike right through there. It's two and one. Three and one, a walk, of course, brings a potential tying run to the plate. Ground ball, that should end the inning. Hilliard throws him up. One hit, one run, no airs, none left. We go to the bottom half of the eighth inning, and the Braves lead it 7 5. Neil Heaton still on the hill for the Pirates. Raphael Belliard will lead it off, and Marvin Freeman has moved on deck for Atlanta. Belliard tonight has hit the ball hard on a couple of occasions. He's one out of three. That a triple to right center. Back in the fourth inning. 0 and 1 the count to the little man.
Braves have a Knights of Columbus fan club in Miami. Had him played perfectly. Bonilla makes the play. One down. Boyard hit it sharply again. Freeman is 0 for 4 on the year. Well, sorry to read this. Catcher John Russell, the former Brave, has been placed on the 15 day disabled list due to a strained ulnar nerve in his right elbow. Foul back this way. It's 0 and 1. Fastball outside. A ball and a strike is the count. One and two now the count. Looking ahead to the Pirate ninth, the lower end is due. Wow. He did everything except raise the right arm. Two balls, two strikes. Even Marvin wasn't sure on this one. Well, it's academic now. Two down. Freeman out on strength. Heaton records his second. And here's Otis Nixon, who kept his hitting streak rolling with a first inning single, stole a base, scored a run. He's one out of four. He turns around now and hits from the right side. Shortened a bunt. Took it low, one ball, no strengths. Ground ball up the middle, leaned, has it though. And the inning is quickly over, nothing doing. In the eighth for Atlanta, we go to the ninth inning. Braves up by two at 7 5 Atlanta. We go to the ninth inning. Jose Lean will lead it off for the Pirates. Lean two out of three he has scored a run. Tonight's Hogan's Heroes episode is drums along the Dusseldorf. For those of you who wondered, that's coming up between games. Then Smiley and Mailer in game two. Marvin Freeman trying to shut him down. There's a strike at the knees. It's 0 and 1. Freeman has no saves this year. Only has one previous save in the majors that came last year with the Phillies against the Braves. Fouled away. He's quickly out in front. Nothing and two. There's Marvin's fan club from the upper deck, Athens, Georgia. Tommy Glavin has a fan club now. Warner Robins, Georgia. Recruiting members. We'll have to get the address for that one. The 0 2. High pop on the infield. Who wants it? Pendleton calls for it. One down. Lean is retired. For the first out of the inning. And Orlando Merced will come out and pinch hit for Prince. And Barry Bonds moves on back. One out, nobody aboard. Socrates who first said you can't win a doubleheader unless you win the first game and the Braves are two outs away from accomplishing that. Fouled away and again Freeman 
I had him account nothing and two. A foggy night in Atlanta. Chase the terrible pitch. They'll have to throw him out. Olsen handles that two down. Freeman has set down three in a row. Here's Bond. He kind of went down the ladder on Merced. That was a terrible pitch that Merced looked like a golfer. Trying to get one out of the rough. Here's Bond. We will see more of him in the second game, and there's why. Pretty good number. And he had a horrible first month. Bond stand right in the middle of the box, right on top of the plate. He looks at a fastball, a little low, one ball, no strikes. He's the Pirates' last hope, but if he reaches, the tying run comes to the plate. Two balls, no strikes. Bonds has had good luck against Freeman in his career. Four out of eight. Three balls, no strikes. Reedus is next. They still have Andy Van Slyke. Waiting in the wings, Mike Lavalier. There's a strike, it's three and one. Ground ball foul on the count of throw. Three balls, two strikes. And the Braves fans are on their feet here. Two strikes, two out of the ninth. Line drive down the right field line into the corner, and Bonds will be standing at second base with two down. Boy, he is some hit. What do you do now? Here's Gary Reedus. Gonna hit for himself. Reedus has homered, popped the first, drove in a run with a sacrifice fly, and walked. Oh, he's had a fine night. A home run here ties it up. One for three lifetime against Marvin Freeman. Freeman has thrown just one home run ball all year. Runner at second with two out. A strike. One and one.
That should do it. Nice hop for Pendleton. Braves win. Tommy Glavin gets the win. Marvin Freeman gets the save. The Braves win the first game of the doubleheader. 7 5, your final score, totals, and highlights after this. The Atlanta Braves, America's team, has been brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you friends know when to say when. And by the official airline of the Atlanta Braves, Delta. We love to fly, and it shows. The Braves begin a 14-game homestand with a win in game one of the twin bill of the Pittsburgh Pirates. 7-5, your final for Atlanta. Seven runs, eight hits, one error. The Braves leave six men on. The Pirates, five runs, eight hits, one error. They strand five. Tom Glavin matches his career high in victories. He wins his 14th. He's now 14-5 and five for the year. Marvin Freeman picks up his first save for Atlanta. He only had one previous major league save. That was with the Phillies. The losing pitcher is Doug Drabeck. His record goes to 10 and 10. So it's a 7-5 Atlanta victory. A lot of heroes for the Braves. Brian Hunter, a two-run homer. Jeff Treadway, a two-run double. Greg Olson drove in two with a homer and a bases loaded walk. Our next game coming your way in about 20 minutes. The starting pitchers will be Rick Mailer with a record of 1 and 4 for Atlanta. John Smiley with a record of 12 and 6. Will be on the mound for the Pittsburgh Pirates in game two. As the Braves try for the doubleheader sweep, they also win their 50th game of the year with a 7-5 victory in game one. Coming up next on TBS, Hogan's Heroes.